I once stayed at a villa in Bali with a view of the Indian Ocean. Every morning, all I saw before me was possibility. That and a gorgeous housekeeper named Putu. Red Reddington is the definition of a world traveler. He has been to all reaches of the globe. He has done more in a week than people do in a lifetime. I don't need visas, passports, travel documents. Give me a bug out bag in 30 seconds and I'm on my way to anywhere in the world. I don't think he ever lets something pass by mm, that he finds curious or he finds appreciation in. Tastes just like Patty Sutton. Life is very, very dear to him. It gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. If there's an experience to have been had, he went there and did that because that's the kind of guy that he is. The idea of stories that underscore a guy who has a huge appetite for life is what we sort of try and go for. He is a man of impeccable taste when it comes to uh, great wine. He smokes fine cigars. To the sort of very romantic, almost small town element that he has. Dembe, I'll get her downstairs. After you're finished, grab the pretzels. Red's proclivities uh, come from a combination of you know, what, what we project onto that character as sort of a wish fulfillment, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could live like, like this? It wouldn't it be great if, if we could order the most expensive wine at the restaurant. That said, it's probably undrinkable by now, so I also brought you an 82 Brunello as a backup. Beyond that, even knew what to order. If we knew what to go into the fancy French restaurant and order, what would we order? S'il vous plaît pour Madame, un cocktail de la Réaction. I have a couple friends in Los Angeles who are, are big into sort of craft cocktails and making their own drinks and so forth, and it's like an, an art to them. Um, and they introduced me to one, which is an aviation cocktail, which most people think tastes like hair tonic or like shampoo. Um, I happen to love it. Oh, this isn't what I ordered. In the episode, they maybe got it a little too purple. Might not have been, might have been, might have been a little too much lavender in it, but... Uh, yeah, James had a, a, an addition to that line. It was something like, tastes like spring, doesn't it? And uh, he said that, and I thought, yeah, it kind of does. Aviation cocktail. Uh -huh. It's from the 20s. Tastes like spring, doesn't it? A man of, of many wines and many drinks and many great foods. Remember the time we made barley stew with that coroner from Des Moines? It was Reuben soup. <laughs> How can I forget? I was sleeping with his sister. He's eaten a lot of Russian food. Um, there's baklava. You haven't touched your baklava. You told him and he's not interested? <sighs> Just one bite. We almost had to serve him once. I think it was scripted as he was eating like, a, you know, goat knees or something ridiculous like that. And I was really a little nervous about serving him that because I, I don't personally, I wouldn't want to eat that. but. Uh, he would have manned up, he would have done it, but they wrote it out and changed it into something easy like toast. Ah, gracias. We usually source around the city the best mm -hmm. people and we hi hire them to make it look good. And then uh, after a couple hours, once the lights get to it and it's horrific, uh, if he's not eating it, you know, a couple of little squirts of oil or water, fluff it up a little bit, flip it over, it helps keep it fresh looking. <laughs> you really should dry the peaches. They're perfectly ripe and freestone. Unlike a clingstone, the pit of a freestone separates more freely from the flesh, making it ideal for consumption. He is above the fray, but also of the people. Cultural peculiarities notwithstanding, I find cockfighting to be abominable. However, truth be told, I do love fried chicken. My childhood and my past in Nebraska, which is probably where some of Red's uh, like for fried chicken or some of the, um, the kids that he used to know as a, cool, uh, as, as a kid going to the snowflake dance or watching Gary Goddard dance, you know? They're just sort of ways for us to make ourselves laugh, really. That kid, man, he could move. Won the eighth grade talent show. Gary even danced his way into Helen Hummer's pants, and let me tell you something, that was like breaking into Fort Knox. That's sort of the confluence of 
Raymond Reddington being like us, but knowing how to be better than us. Slushy. Pass. Oh my gosh, you have no idea what you're missing. Try a grapefruit gusher. It's just like you today, a little sour. In Wu Zhang, there's this amazing scene where he sort of has this like velvet, navy backdrop and he looks like Liberace and he's like having, you know, fine shine and this extravagant meal. And then at the beginning of this season, he's also, you know, in a Jeep in Africa. Moving him between different worlds is the fun of Spader. And Spader is still Spader no matter what world he's in. Oh my stars. Is that how you cope with this insufferable humidity? I couldn't do it. With uh, Reddington, he's a very, as I would call, luxurious but purposeful gentleman. Perhaps next time. Everything that he wears is made from the finest fabrics in the world that one would be able to find, but it also is super practical, so he can take it from wherever he needs to go. Whatever he's doing, he always looks appropriate. All of his suits are custom made, but everything has a purpose, and there's many layers, so he can take off a jacket or take off a vest, roll his shirt sleeves up, and he's ready for you know, a boat in Thailand or who knows, you know? Everything is purposeful so he can take it wherever he needs to be. We should probably get going if you want to make Havana by noon. For Reddington, when he's traveling, he doesn't want to stand out and he doesn't want to look like a tourist and he also isn't in any disguise. So for him traveling, I'm not trying to make him look any particular way when he goes to a country other than purposeful and comfortable. I wake up, no sheets, Vaseline everywhere. Uh, lipstick on the mirror overhead reads, same time next year, I haven't missed an art expo in Basel since. If he's coming from a different part of the world or he's telling a story about a different part of the world, we always like to talk about our own personal experiences or things we may know. Charlene's from the Dominican. I've always promised we'd spend more time there. I hate sand. I went to Moscow uh, on a trip, and so it's coming in with stories of like, what if we did something in a banya? You know, there was this amazing scene where he was eating caviar, and it's like thinking about our personal experiences and our personal travels and, and using that. Go get cleaned up. We'll have dinner. I know a wonderful little hole in the wall. It's actually in a hole in a wall. Fun little holes in the wall or a bar that we would have always wanted to have a drink at is a place that we can live out our fantasy that Reddington has clearly been to and perhaps has his own table there. And also this really incredible thing called Google. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it is amazing and gives us lots of information. So we definitely do a lot of looking on the internet at fancy extravagant things. Part of the fun of it is that you're trying to write something that is obviously entertaining, but you're also trying to express some Thing personal. In Mexico, there are these fish that have colonized the freshwater caves along the Sierra de la Abra. They were lost. They found themselves living in complete darkness. So they didn't die. Instead, they thrived. They adapted. When my kids were younger, we used to go to the zoo here in LA, and uh, they had a little cheesy, like, situation in this LA zoo and in it was this tank with these blind fish. They lost their pigmentation, their sight, eventually even their eyes. With survival they became hideous. So when we were trying to think of a story for him to tell that might be about him and his loss of any internal beauty, I don't know why, but I thought of the fish in the zoo. I wonder if a ray of light were to make it into the cave, would I be able to see it? If we're not going to divulge larger revelations about him, at least for people to really feel like they're becoming familiar with him and have a very have a sense that they really do know more than they actually know just by the fact that he's willing to he's willing to divulge in fact much more intimate little glimpses into who he is and his life i died once in marrakesh two and a half minutes wouldn't believe what i saw on the other side if you allow people to see an intimacy then you don't have to then you don't have to reveal the, really the prescient matter at hand